Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the penultimate session in our summer series organized by the Orthodox Fellowship of St. John the Baptist, entitled Through the Prayers of Our Holy Mothers and Fathers. My name is Margaret Haig, and I'm the current chair of the fellowship. Uh, the fellowship brings together Orthodox Christians from the different traditions in the British Isles and Ireland through talks, pilgrimages, conferences and youth festivals. And if you would be interested in joining the fellowship, then please look at our website. I'll be posting the link in the chat shortly. Next year, a bit of advance warning for you. Um, we will be organising an in-person conference, so not on Zoom, although we might try and have some online element. Um, and we would like you to save the date. So 25th to the 29th of August next year, we will be having our conference in Walsingham in Norfolk. We're excited to announce that we will be joined by Father Stephen de Young, author of The Religion of the Apostles and co-host of the Lord of All Spirits podcast on Ancient Faith Radio. The working title of the conference is Angelic Beings, and we hope to open applications in September. So look out for that. <clears throat> We're pleased to offer these sessions for free, but we do welcome donations, which we will use to help reduce the cost of the conference next year so that more people can attend. So while I'm thinking about that, I'm going to put the um, link in the chat for you so that you have our policy for this event, the link to the website and the link to make a donation if you are able. This summer series focuses on some of the important saints and witnesses of the 20th century. We've already heard in this series about Father Nikolai Steinhardt, Saint Siloan and Saint Sophroni, Saint Maria of Paris, and last week, Metropolitan Antony of Suraj. The final session next week will be on Saint Porphyrios and Eldris Galvrilia. This evening, I'm really happy to welcome Dr. Alexei Tsvelik, who's joining us from New York in the United States. He's giving us a wave. And he will be speaking to us about Father Alexander Men. Dr. Tsvelik was born in 1945 in Samara, Russia. He's a theoretical physicist and obtained, obtained his PhD in 1980. He became a fellow of the American Physical Society in 2002 and was a recipient of the Alexander von Humboldt Prize in 2014. He was employed by the Landau Institute for Theoretical Physics in Moscow, the University of Oxford, hooray, and since 2001 at Brookhaven National Laboratory. He has published more than 200 papers in peer-reviewed journals, including Science, Nature Communications, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences and Physical Review Letters. He has also published two books in quantum field theory published by Cambridge University Press. Now this might see, seem a very academic background for someone giving us one of our talks, but I'm sure um, uh, Alexei will share with us why he feels uh, so close to Father Alexander and his teachings and writings. After Alexei's presentation, <clears throat> you'll have the opportunity to ask questions. And as usual, we'll do this using the chat function. So please do put your questions in there as we go along, if you think of them, and um, we'll ask as many as we can um, get round to. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you're using a laptop or a computer to access Zoom, then your chat button will be towards the bottom of the screen in a speech bubble. And if you're using a smartphone or a tablet, you might need to either tap your screen or swipe your screen to find the chat. I recommend you go on to speaker view um, for the presentation. Alexei will be sharing his screen and have, has some slides to share with us as well. Um, but what we'll do just to begin the talk um, is I will say a quick prayer for us to begin. O heavenly King, the comforter, the spirit of truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from all impurity and save our souls, O good one. Amen. Alexei, over to you. Please feel free to start sharing your screen. That's great, and we can see that, thank you. Father Alexander Min, 1935-1990. So, uh, uh, 
Uh, yeah, very, um, a very famous um, Russian scholar and Christian Sergei Averintsev said that Father Alexander Main was a missionary sent by God to the savage tribe of the Soviet intelligentsia. And uh, Father Alexander characterized the circumstances of his um, life and service in the following way. We live in the aftermath of the spiritual nuclear explosion and suffer from its fallout. I think this is the best uh, the description of the uh, Soviet society um, I have ever heard. And I myself uh, was, I was born in 1954 and I lived in this society for 35 years. Um, so father, Alexander was born in 1935 in a Jewish family, and he was uh, baptized together with his mother uh, shortly after his birth. Um, at that time, um, the, uh, all allegiance, including the Orthodox Church were forbidden in the Soviet Union. So he was secretly baptized by a priest from the so-called catacomb, catacomb church. Um, uh, he was born perhaps in the darkest period of the Soviet Union. Uh, the USSR, um, was a society of a state atheism and uh, communist ideology was in the full swing, uh, carrying all marks of the quasi religious cult, which intend, uh, intended to replace all religions. It was extremely jealous of uh, any influence and uh, pre, pre, uh, pre, pre pretended to be an absolute um, uh, uh, to, to have an absolute control on people's consciousness. So um, it's just amazing that there were people at that time who would um, be converted into Christianity and um, had a courage and uh, faith and stamina to carry um, all this through their lives. And in the times uh, when Father Alexander was born were actually the times of the peak of the Soviet terror when um, thousands of people would be shot during a single day and me, uh, hundreds of thousands would go into, into concentration camps. Um, the, the, Young years, well, uh, even being in a school in the uh, seventh grade, uh, yeah, young student Alexander wrote 
and they say what Bible tells us and what does it teach. And in 1953, uh, uh, Alexander Main be, be became a, a student of Moscow current Down Institute. In 1955, this institute was relocated to the Russian Far East to, to the town of Irkutsk. But he uh, did not manage to uh, finish his studies to, to get a degree because in 1958 he was expelled from the institute just before the graduation. He was expelled for his religious views. Uh, D, D, despite the fact that um, Stalin died in 1953 and the state uh, terror was not uh, that strong anymore, uh, the situation with, uh, with the church became even worse. Uh, Nikita Khrushchev, Stalin's successor, was closing even, even those churches which uh, Stalin allowed to um, open during the World War II be, 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 because during the World War II, uh, Stalin needed all support from the Soviet state he could manage and he allowed uh, the Orthodox Church to some, uh, some limited freedom. But the uh, Soviet society still I remained an absolutely atheist. It was a religion was universally considered as a superstition for an educated person to be a religious. It, it was it was it was considered as something crazy, and needless to say that no uh, no religious book, books were allowed to be uh, uh, published. Well, pe pe people were mm, pro prosecuted for ke keeping the Bible for, 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 for instance. Ma many people who had old books in their uh, libraries were so afraid that, that they would destroy these books. And um, I'm just wondering how Father Alexander managed to, um, to get educated in this respect and where he, 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 he was getting his literature when it, it was difficult not just to get religious books, but even to to, to buy Alexander Pushkin or the, 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 the Dostoevsky was difficult though they were not forbidden at all. They were studied in school, but the, pre, uh, the printing press was mostly pr producing an official, official garbage. Um, So, uh, uh, happily by the time Father Alexander, uh, well, Alexander Main was expelled from, uh, from the uh, Institute, he st managed to start his career in the church. In 1958, he was ordained as deacon at the same year, he uh, finished his 
first book uh, um, about about Christ, the a book in, entitled "The Son of Man," and um, he originally he printed just six 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 copies of this book in some is that and uh, for those who know who Alexander uh, great Russian poet Alexander Galich was um, he, there is a quotation from him that Erika produces just four copies but sometimes it's just enough and indeed this uh, book when the thirst for um, when a, a kind of a religious revival started in the so Soviet Union, uh, this uh, book was um, spreading in uh, uh, self-made uh, corpus. In 1960, um, um, Alexander Main was ordained as priest and uh, he, he, again, uh, here is his uh, fo uh, photograph as a young, as a young priest. And there is another picture here uh, illustrating uh, the attitude of the authorities to the a religion. Uh, uh, Nikita Khrushchev, the head of the so so Soviet Union, a former Stalin's henchman, uh, personally responsible for the death of about 300,000 people. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, he was introducing a kind of a liberalization of the Soviet society, but the atheism still uh, ruled the day. You can see here a uh, um, picture of Yuri Gagarin floating in space with an uh, inscription below, there is no God. So, and uh, uh, but uh, during the, the 60s, Father Alexander had changed to parishes in the Mohosko region, but at last he, be, he, 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 he got a kind of a permanent position as a uh, parish priest in Novaya Di, Di, Di Revne, New Village, where he served till his martyrdom in 1990. The 70s were uh, a rather happy uh, years for, for, for him be, be because a kind of religious revival started in the USSR. I think it, it was a, a time when the communist ideology lost its luster. Um, people uh, were gradually be, become aware about the nature of the Soviet regime and uh, the intelligentsia became disillusioned um, with the official ideology. And Father Alexander B. B. became literally a missionary for the savage tribe of the Soviet in intelligentsia because he was an, one of a few priests who could speak the same the same language as the in intelligence and he became po uh, popular. Many cultural 
cultural figures and dissidents de de became his parishioners. Among them, uh, Alexander Alexander Galich, yeah, uh, famous uh, dissident poet, uh, future my parish priest in New, New, New York, uh, Father Action of Merson, well, not yet a priest at the time, just a young dissident who was in 1972, he was expelled from the Soviet Union and uh, famous, fam famous writer Alexander Solzhenitsyn was uh, also a friend of Father Alexander. Uh, uh, Father Alexander has always been a prolific writer, and you, um, you, you who can wonder whether he would get all, all necessary information, uh, how, how he could uh, collect the literature for the enormous number of uh, books on religious subjects he uh, managed to write and secretly uh, published. They were either pu published abroad under a pen name or uh, distributed in the so-called sum is that he, uh, he, he was all, also a absolutely fantastic preacher. Um, I have uh, heard many of his sermons, but most of his life as a priest, he was under a surveillance of the KGB. Uh, we have reasons to believe that the priests who were serving him, with him in the same church uh, were writing a reports on him and eventually uh, his situation became critical under uh, when Andropov, uh, the former head of KGB, be, be became the general secretary of the Soviet Union, it was in 1982-84, and um, Andropov was tightening the, the screws, the anti-religious uh, pro propaganda was intensifying, and for Father Alexander uh, at the time was frequently in interrogated at the KGB headquarters in Moscow, and many thought that his arrest was imminent. But uh, Andropov died, and um, after the short reign by Chernenko, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev became the general secretary, and the situation got somewhat eased, eased and after the, Ch Ch the Chernobyl disaster triggered perestroika and the general liberalization of the society. And uh, from 1987 on, it became possible to give public lectures on religious subjects and Father Alexander immediately used the opportunity uh, and perhaps he was the only one who uh, really did. The Orthodox Church as a whole was absolutely unprepared for this uh, new opportunity for this liberalization of society. Actually, 
it came absolutely unexpectedly for everyone. Uh, not even such people as academician Sakharov, for example, or any of the dissidents expected that the Soviet Union would ever open up. And, and of course, nobody thought that it would collapse so soon. Well, despite the fact that after the event, many people would say, oh, 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 oh. of course, we were quite confident that uh, this, uh, the Soviet Union would not stand and collapse. But the, um, nobody in my, in my circles be, 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 be believed in it at the time. But during the last three years before his martyrdom, Father Alexander had given about 300 public lectures on Christianity, religions, on uh, influence of Christianity on, uh, on literature, literature and science. He, he be became extremely, extremely popular, uh, but uh, well, he himself um, was was in a hurry to make uh, to to do as much as possible uh, because he was acutely aware that he would not be allowed to carry on for much longer. Was one of my friends who, who was an icon painter. She was very close friend of the um, father Alexander, um, so close that they were calling him Alec. She to told me that once she told him, well, Alec, they're going to murder you. And he answered, I am ready. And that's exactly what happened on September 9, 1990, early in the morning, he was on his way to the church and uh, some unknown, um, unknown person struck him in the head and um, the wound was and in less than an hour, Father Alexander was dead. Now, this was a kind of short in introduction. Now I will um, tell you about my personal experiences and first few words about myself. So I was born in 1954 in a big industrial town, Samara on the Volga River. I had a very happy childhood surrounded by my adoring family, but none of them were big believers as I'm uh, saying it was a very um, a rare thing in the so, so, Soviet Union, the atheism was kind of accepted by the society, especially by the educated uh, uh, part of the society. And my, my, my father was an engineer, my mother was a uh, medical medical doctor my uh, my grandmother was a, a history te teacher in school um, from my years in high school I felt a strong interest for in physics and mathematics and this de determined my life 
career as a scientist. In 1971, I became a student of a very prestigious Moscow Physical Technical Institute from where I graduated in 1976. During my student years, I gradually became aware about the nature of the Soviet regime. And actually, I perceived this, I have always perceived this regime as essentially demonic. And the, it was not just a tyranny, uh, oppression, et cetera, et cetera. There were some completely irrational cruelty of this regime, which would not be explained by any political ne, ne, ne necessity. For, for instance, um, during the uh, years of Stalin's terror, um, the, um, um, when people were arrested, the authorities took pains to extract confessions from them. Uh, so it, sometimes it would take months of torture uh, to, to, to extract these confessions. But these confessions would, would not uh, go public. They were uh, kept secret. So it, it was a to torture for the sake of torture to uh, and uh, a, a purely de, 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 de demonic thing from the uh, practical point of view well m m many of these people would eventually be shot executed so why would you go into uh, what I would you bother to um, extract this confessions, everybody understood they were absolutely fake and extracted in under duress. So uh, when I uh, learned uh, about it and as, as many other people, I was absolutely uh, shocked. So my, uh, my, uh, obviously I was looking for, uh, for something else. And the um, reading of Karamazov brothers and especially the legend of great inquisitor in, by Dostoevsky started my conversion to Christianity. But I, I was brought up in the atheistic Marxist society, and I, I still thought that it was not impossible to reconcile science and religion. And I shared my doubts with my friend Sasha Arnold, a son of famous dissident, and he told me that he knew a priest uh, who is also a scientist. And one day I went to Novaya Derevnya and uh, Father Alexander, I, I, I still I remember this, Father Alexander was standing in front of the church, uh, probably taking care of some uh, flowers. I approached him I introduced myself and asked whether scientists can believe in God. And he answered, why not? When I look in my microscope, I experience more hope than when I am standing in my church. And I was deeply moved. And uh, I started uh, coming frequently to this to 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 this church I, I frequently as I could because I, I, I was living in uh, Moscow not very 
close to Novaya Deryevna. And, but when I uh, met Father Alexander closer, I understood that he was a very special and he, he was completely unlike other people. Uh, every time I was with him or e even when he was not very close, but being just around, I had a very sp special feeling. So this, what I called an ex existential anxiety, which we feel about life, that any time something may go unexpectedly wrong, this existential anxiety would completely disappear. Um, Father Alexander radiated a supreme confidence. Uh, he had, he lacked this existential fear. And I think that be, be because he had perfect faith, he knew, he was confident that ultimately it was God who was in charge. And that God is stronger than everybody else. And, and so he put his fate in the God's hand and he in this expelled anxiety. So he obviously he his Life was difficult. He would su su surrounded by pe pe people. He had this trouble with with the authorities who who, who might expect arrest or, or, or uh, his family could suffer. Uh, but but nevertheless, he looked like a happy man. And um, I think that his life was, a, what was important for me, and was which de de determined my life, that Father Alexander demonstrated in his life, in his personality, his personality was a demonstration that Christianity was not just a good theory or a thing of the past, but but or was something to be de desired, but it was an actual reality. So the, this was a demonstration of Christ, I would say. So uh, um, I have many books by for, for other uh, Alexander. My uh, favorite ones are his multi-volume course on the history of religions uh, with a dedication to a great Russian religious philosopher, Vladimir Solovyov. And Father Alexander, like Vladimir Solovyov before him, never thought about non-biblical religions and philosophy as a bunch of false goods. Rather, he, he considered them as human hands extended towards heaven, to which God gave answer in the coming of Christ. But <laughs> it is amazing how much of Father Alexander's personality is contained in his writing. That actually every time I read his books, I almost physically hear his voice. This deeply inspiring, beautiful, and cordial voice. So, Vladimir uh, Alavyov, this impressive beautiful personality 
and he in the center, Father, young Father Alexander is standing at his grave in uh, Moscow. Um, so Solovyov uh, lived uh, in the second part of the 19th century. He was a son of a famous historian. He lived in the times when the Russian society, the, uh, the atheism started imposing its grasp on the Russian intelligentsia and uh, he managed to turn this tide somewhat around and he initiated the first Russian religious renaissance, uh, which um, brought to life such thinkers as Nikolai Bergyaev, Pavel Florensky, Alexei Losev, Sergei Bulgakov, and influenced famous poets like Alexander Bloch, Andrei Belly, and Sergei Solovyov, the nephew of the philosopher. During the uh, Soviet period, uh, his books were not published and uh, Father Alexander um, came across Vladimir Solovyov just by chance. He bought his book from an antique dealer on a street market. <laughs> well, probably more, more, most of his library he, he collected in the same way. Um, so, so Solovyov's ideas about a relation between science and religion have influenced me very deeply and Father Alexander encouraged my interest and gave me a blessing to present a small lecture course on Solovyov to high school students. And this interest has not left me ever since. And I have published two books on the uh, uh, subject of religion and science. One in Russian, it's called Life in the Impossible World. And another one in English, it's called Six Days reason as a cosmic phenomenon and um, the disciple of Father Alexander, Father Mikhail Mirson uh, wrote an afterword for this book. And this year, the Russian version will be published hopefully in September. So I think that the influence of Father Alexander in contemporary Russia is very significant, maybe, maybe even great. You, you, you can look in, in internet and you will see a huge number of, first of all, many of his, many of his lectures were um, um, Mm. Are, re are recorded and filmed and they are now available on YouTube. Uh, his books have been published, they're widely available. There are religious societies de 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 dedicated to oh, Father Alexander, there are religious foundations seminars, um, lecture co courses. Of, of, of course, there are many people in, in the Orthodox Church which are not very, very happy without it. But um, I think that as during his lifetime, Father Alexander 
from heaven continues to stand for the real church, not for an imperial appendage seeking a protection from the state. I myself, I often pray to him and I think he helps me. He also blessed my de de departure and my ca career as a physicist and gave me directions how to contact his friend and disciple, Father Michael Merson in New York. And we met with Father Michael in 1989, shortly after my arrival to the States, and I be became a member of this parish. I think that's all I had to, to, to say. And I would appreciate any, any, any questions and discussion. Thank you so much, Alexei, for such a wonderful introduction uh, to Father Alexander. And I'm sure there'll be people on the call today who are not so familiar with him and uh, will be grateful for, for your introduction. Um, can I request that you stop sharing the screen so that we can uh, uh, see your yeah. face? That would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, yeah. That's great. Um, so I do encourage everyone to put your questions into the chat box um, as you think of them. That would be uh, really good. Um, but I'm happy to start off um, with a couple of questions. And I have many. Um, I don't know where to start almost. There are so many links with the people who we've been talking about and listening, listening to their stories during this series that we're having. Um, these interesting cosmic spiritual links um, from one place to another. And um, it was interesting about how you were saying um, uh, that you were uh, reading Dostoevsky, the brothers Karamazov or Karamazov brothers, whichever way round <laughs> you translate it. Um, and it's, it's 200 years this year since Dostoevsky's birth. So there is a bit more interest in him. And um, I don't think this happened by chance, but I've, I've just picked up a copy of Solzhenitsyn, uh, A Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, and um, I've just started that. And I think I didn't know that there was a connection between him and Father Alexander. And I just wondered, you said um, in the presentation that he linked, as well as making the links between religion and science, he also made the connections between religion and literature. And I oh, wondered yeah. if you could say a bit more about that. No, for, uh, well, Father I, I was a, not a, just a pre he was an extremely cultural man. He he has I don't know where where he got all this time to read so much, but uh, 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 he. Uh, no, there, there is a book by him, Christianity and Culture. And, uh, and he was giving public, public, public lectures about influence of Christian ideas or anti-Christian ideas to this or that poet or um, writer uh, and uh, he, he, it was also interesting for, uh, for, 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 for him how this anti-Christian spirit was um, revealing itself in the writings of very talented Russian poets, Sergei Yesenin, for example, and I, I remember him saying, well, poets are not speaking by themselves. So, so somebody was speaking through this uh, very, I would say very tender and soulful Poet, but he was expressing some crazy, bloodthirsty 
ideas uh, saying that, look, there is a new savior riding a horse. Uh, our truth is in power. Ah, no, our faith is in power. Our truth is in us. This was the spirit of this new demonic uh, power. And, and it was expressed by such a beautiful poet who later committed suicide. He, he, he could not just carry, carry this inside of him. He became an alcoholic and, and cut his ways mm. in 1925. Uh, the, uh, did Father Alexander study science extensively from academic background? Well, uh, he was mm, educated as a bi bi biologist in this e institute. And uh, after that, I guess uh, he, <laughs> he was um, teaching himself. Uh, what is the most wonderful for me is just how he and his family survived this uh, times from his birth to the beginning of the 60s or the 70s because I would imagine he would, they would be virtually alone almost for, like on isolated island in, in this society who was, where the atheism was celebrated. Yes, I think um, it's in, I found it interesting in your talk that he was ordained so young. You know, he was only 23 when he became, when he was ordained deacon and, and a couple of years later as a priest, you know, that that's very young, he clearly showed just How he had the, absorbed the, this. The, even there is in, an important question from Elizabeth. Kelsey. Yes, I was. I was going to come oh. back. Don't worry, I'm going to cover everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. The phenomenon of people looking to science as a substitute for religion is widespread, also among the savage tribes of the modern West. Have you found that Father Alexander's thinking resonates? with some of your non-Orthodox, perhaps non-religious colleagues in Britain and America. Actually, the situation is much more complicated than this. Uh, there are certainly people like the notorious Richard Dawkins and Dennett and others who claim that science has proven that God does not exist. But they actually don't consider science as a religion. Um, their message is different. They're saying, no, they, they don't want any religion whatsoever. Well, we are preaching, as Dawkins said, when you carefully look at the universe, you get a picture of a pitiless indifference. And the late Steven Weinberg, uh, famous Nobel Prize physicist said, the longer you look at the universe, the more pointless it looks. It all looks. So what they're preaching is a, in fact, is a demonism. 
they are saying there is no hope. There is absurd, absurd, and and we need, we have we need to have courage to 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 take it like that. But curiously, and this is science. This is science. According to them, science preaches ultimate absurd, which I don't, of course, agree. But but the but the message, the the message is this, and we have to, we need to have courage to 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 live without any illusion, without any any hope. But but there is a different moment, which of people who are probably were more clever than Dawkins. This is the postmodernist move who denies science uh, in, be, 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 because probably they understand that the real message of science is quite different. The, the science is based on reason and, uh, and uh, assumes that human reason is similar to the reason which uh, is re responsible for, for the universe. And it's, it, Dawkins does, doesn't understand this, but, but people like Michael Foucault, like Derrida and others, they probably understood it very well and and the and postmodernism from the very beginning was the enemy of of of, of the reason the logic the science and ultimately the enemy of richard Dawkins. <laughs> paradoxically enough so so for 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 them um, that's, um, and I think that this, the new trend, which is against it, and they call the science a to 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 totalitarian project. They, they, he say it's just another meta narrative and all meta narratives should, should be, discarded, it's all a will for power, it's a narrative which the colonial West imposes on oppressed minorities, and it's logocentrism, phallocentrism, etc. It should be all, all overcome and destroyed. So in that and I think at our time it's more it's more dangerous than any science as a substitute of religion. I think this, mm -hmm. this is thing of yesterday. Well, science will be persecuted now as a religion is. Yes, um, thank you. Um, there was a question earlier which, which got missed. So I'm going to go back to that one. So Seraphim asked, about um, us how can I can I sorry I Alexei to, ah, can can yes. I go back to a previous question which yes. which we haven't answered um yes. uh, it was earlier in the chat so I'm just going back to that Seraphim was asking about um, the death of Father Alexander and um, obviously it happened over thirty years ago the the assailant remains unknown. Uh, is there any suggestion of, of motive? Was it political? Was it religious? Um, you've spoken about it as a martyrdom, um, yeah, but uh, do we actually, have more information? No, no, not as far as I am concerned. Father Alexander was hated by many in the church, deeply hated. Uh, uh, he was he was a Jew, and they um, hated him hated him for that. 
they always suspected him being a secret Zionist. They hated him for his ecumenism, uh, for the fact that he was not viciously orthodox. Um, um, uh, well, uh, I have some reasons to believe that this assassin was a professional. Um, and this this might be K KGB or uh, s s somebody of that kind. Um, for, for Father Alexander was a, certainly the leader of the church movement. They they could not. There they were too many who. Would, would be very happy to mm. remove them. Yes. Um, so, so to go to return to Regina's question, um, talking about changing your mind, changing your views. You mentioned that wonderful uh, encounter with him outside the church, and talking ah. about whether a scientist can believe in God. But uh, could you tell us a bit more about how he managed to convince you that Christianity and the church was the right path? Actually, <laughs> I, I ceased to be a Marxist when, uh, in my student years. Uh, we, we, we had very deep, in, in, in the institute, we, we had several courses on the, first of all, on the Marxist teachings in economy, on the Marxist on the Marxist philosophy. And the last course was the so-called scientific communism. So I was very well versed in the uh, uh, teachings of Marx, Lenin, et cetera, et cetera. And just by reading this, I, I understood that it was garbage. No, no, no. To to who begin with from Marx, um, he thought that all value uh, was produced by manual labor. This is the basis of his economic theory, and from this point, and and actually, uh, this theory was the directly are reflected on 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 my on my on my position in the society as a non-manual work. I I couldn't produce any value. <laughs> yes. According according to 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 whom to whom and and of course when I was reading Lenin who was suggesting to exterminate members of families of people who, who he, he, he was writing about shooting children. And, but uh, uh, I was certainly not a Marxist, but uh, but, but uh, uh, nevertheless, it was di 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 difficult for, for me, for instance, to re reconcile um, the Bible and uh, the Bible and science. Actually, my last book, The Six Days, as you can see from the um, uh, title is related to that, <laughs> to this very six, six days, yes, shortly described in the Bible. Yeah. Yes, and I suggest everyone so, tries to... 
in, in, in some sense, I, I was ready and he just found the trigger <laughs> as he as he was had a talent to do this. Mm. Thank you. Um, Father Ian has asked about um, uh, Father Alexander as a sort of um, uh, talking about the Orthodox and Roman Catholic uh, potential reconciliation um, uh, and whether, whether he sort of matched Father Sergei Bulgakov in that respect um, following on from Vladimir uh, Salaviev. Vladimir Solovyov is still a controversial thinker because of his positive understanding of the Western Church. He was. He... Yes, for Father Alexander was very positive about ecumenism. That, that's why he was hated by many. Mm. He was very, very positive. He, who would used to say the Walls between us don't reach heaven. Absolutely. And yeah. for, 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 for me personally, it, it has never been a problem. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth has, has put a follow-up comment to the previous one about science. Um, so I did not mean to suggest that science is a substitute religion is so dangerous. I suspect it can be a stepping stone. She's thinking of people, not necessarily scientists themselves, for whom it is science that opens up to them something unimaginably greater than themselves. No, that's, that's true, but the position of, more, of most of my colleagues is that they desperately trying to keep their gaze away. They, um, they desperately trying not to see the forest behind the trees. Each, each, each of them is tending for one small plant in this forest, pre pretending that the rest is not there. Mm. So, uh, uh, and this is just just a, it's a it's a it's a conformism, and it's actually a fear to be and to, to become an outcast. But, 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 but I think it's very interesting because the logic of the science you you who cannot fight it. You, you, you either have to abandon the, the, the science or to, to, to forget it or, or to accept it somehow because it's, it's pushing, it, it, it keeps suggesting, suggesting and suggesting. Thank you. Now we don't have any more questions in the chat just at the moment. I'll give people a final opportunity to put something in if they still have a question. In the meantime, um, I was very struck by the idea of living in the now, in God's hands, uh, that Father Alexander expressed through the way he lived, that you that you explained so um, vividly, um, and that Thank you, you know yeah. to get to get rid of this existential anxiety. Uh, I, I love that idea that it, it disappeared when when people spoke to him and and. Um, when he, when he was teaching them. I, I just wondered whether there was a sort of a, a single story or a anecdote that you would like to share with us as, a, as an example of this, or perhaps just a, just a, a general story you'd like to share. The, 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 the point that there are no anecdotes, it, it was a constant feeling yeah. around him. And, and you, 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 you see, I, I'm, I'm in general, I'm not very impressible person. Uh, and uh, well, my wife <laughs> tells me that 
I'm not sensitive enough to people moods, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I never in my life, I managed to be hypnotized, though, though I needed it. I needed this treatment because I, 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 I have a stomach and my, my mother tried to cure it, sending me to, um, to this hypnotic trick. Mm. I, I, I could not. I could not allow anybody to enter into myself. You, you see, but this father Alexander was absolutely different. They, they were no enemies. You just you 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 approach him and you immediately feel certain lightness of spirit. And uh, I experienced it with only one other person once in my life. And it was Andrei Sachar, who, who was, the, uh, he was not an, a b b b believer, at least in a, in a, in a common sense. But I think there is this supreme confidence that you you can completely give you your yourself to the hands of God and say you you're in charge. Whatever happens, I know it's for the best. So it's... Well. I, I always real. yes. That's what that's what it is. Yes. Let your will be done. And Father Alexander was a living embodiment of of this. Great, thank you. Um, well, we've had a few more questions come in. Um, hopefully, we can deal with um, them and then we'll perhaps draw this to a close. So Father Ian first asked about, um, he says, I get the impression from Father Sergei Hackle and others that a network of informal seminars grew up around Father Alexander that was started by those who like you had been learners. Do these circles still exist in Russia today? Yes, very much so, very, mm. very much so. The, 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 that's what I said, you, you just go yeah. to you, you to internet and you 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 see tens of uh, lectures seminars d d d d d discussions yes yeah that's great I, I recommend people go and find those out um james has asked Father Alexander was convinced that Christianity was still at its dawn for humankind and that perhaps more was to be revealed even in these ages. How true or accurate is this? Absolutely true. Uh, absolutely true. Uh, he was repeating and repeating that we are still in our childhood. Mm. Um, great. And Elizabeth, has, it's more of a comment, but um, an interesting one. What you say about your colleagues reminds her of things Simon Conway Morris says about his atheist interlocutors. Uh, so I think you're not alone with that idea of... Uh, no, what Steven Weinberg, this famous atheist, said about his colleagues, they are not atheists. The, 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 he just never think about it. Mm. and yeah. I still do he 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 said well uh, he, it's amazing for for me what are the alternative hypothesis people are ready to accept like this notorious multiverse um, well as 
uh, Richard Swinburne said, it sort of goes against the Occam razor. You accept 10 to the power 500 universes in, instead of a single God. <laughs> yes, that's great, thank you. Um, and um, finally, John has, uh, has asked, what is the relationship between Logos and the science of reason that you've spoken about? The same. Yeah, they are the same. For him, all things were made. Well, thank you, um, Alexei, for, for giving us so much of your time and for telling us, as, a, as I said, possibly to people who are hearing about Father Alexander for the first time, or at least um, his, his interaction and impact on an individual, which is really wonderful to hear. We are so grateful for you um, speaking to us this evening. Thank you. You're welcome. You're most welcome. Thank you. And it looks like you will be uh, receiving a few more book sales from some of the people in the chat. So thank you, everyone. Wow. Um, just to um, conclude, um, and I see some applause from people on the camera. Well, uh, so thank you for that, too. Um, just to conclude, um, I will say that next week is our final session of this series. We will be hearing about St. Porphyrios and Mother Gavrilia. Um, and so I hope you can join us uh, next week at the same time, seven o'clock UK time. Um, in the meantime, I um, would like to say thank you to you all, all everyone who is here for having joined us. And in our time honored way, if you would like, put yourself on gallery view, turn on your camera, and so that we can see there are real people in the room, um, you can wave to each other. And it's just to say hello, thank you for coming. Um, and again, thank you to Alexei for such a stimulating talk. Thank you. You're welcome, bye. Bye everyone, thank you so much for joining us.